Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006. I'm now going to give you an example uh, taken from this very nice website here from Cambridge University showing the construction of a Pourbaix diagram for a zinc system, zinc water system. Now zinc can exist in water in several different states, zinc 2 plus aqueous, ZnOH2 aqueous, and a couple of negative and double negative ions. And uh, we want to see the regions in which these species are stable. So the first thing to do is to map out the stability regions of water, these dashed lines. And then we plot out the equilibrium lines for each of these species. And this is how we do it. Uh, the red line is the simple case of zinc, uh, uh, zinc cation uh, reducing to zinc, so 0.763 would be the standard uh, electrochemical potential at one molar for zinc 2 plus. Uh, but in our case we might be interested in natural waters. It, it might be, for instance here we have point, it looks like it's about 10 to the minus, uh, probably 10 to the minus 2 concentration over here, or no, probably quite a, a little bit less. But we can assume uh, some kind of concentration for the zinc. It doesn't matter what you do, um, but you need to state what that is. Because as I said before, the poor Bay diagram will depend on what concentrations you assume. And this is 0 0.796 plus 0 0.0295, that's 591 divided by 2, times some concentration here, which comes out on this graph to be uh, minus 0.87, so about one unit. The, all, all of that is equal to about one unit. Okay, so there we have a very flat uh, a line because it has no hydrogen contribution. It's a straight electrochemical equilibrium. The remaining reactions uh, involve hydrogen ions, and you can see them over here. Zinc hydroxide, hydrogen, HZnO2 minus, three hydrogens, and ZnO2, two minus, four hydrogens. The slope of these lines is increasing because uh, relatively more hydrogens are being involved in the reaction the blue one four hydrogens, green three, orange two, and zinc zero. That one has no change with height with adding OH, and the blue has the greatest change with adding OH because obviously the OH will react with uh, these hydrogens and cause the biggest change in the E zero, as is indicated in this slope here. Okay, now what do these lines mean? Um, on the right hand side all of these reactions are going to zinc. So what that means is um, above the red line we have zinc 2 plus stable, below we have zinc stable. Above the orange line we have ZnOH2 stable and below we have zinc stable. Uh, likewise for the green and the red. Here well, I've noted the kinds of slopes that occur but using this we can see that Clearly, below the very bottom most part of the graph uh, is where zinc is stable. Let's look at that. Below the red, zinc is stable. But also below the orange, zinc is stable. And below the green and below the blue. So below all of those, zinc is stable. What happens above? Well, above the red... Above the red, uh, zinc 2 plus is stable. Um, and certainly, uh, above the orange, uh, ZnOH2 is stable, but below the orange, it says that zinc is stable. But on the other hand, the red line says that zinc 2 plus is stable. So if we connect, uh, we'll see later, uh, that if we combine this reaction with this one, it turns out that zinc 2 plus will be stable for all of these lines. Um, the uh, I'll come over to this over here. So for all of these lines over here, uh, it turns out that uh, zinc 2 plus is stable for all of those. 
In this pH region, where the orange line becomes briefly lower uh, than the red line, we have ZnOH2 stable. In other words, the lowermost uh, of these reactions dominates the others in the case where all of them react to form the same product zinc. Okay, so zinc is stable down here. Unfortunately, it's stable under conditions where water itself is not stable. So, uh, yes, it's stable, but actually zinc metal can never occur in water in its metallic form. That's what you get from this diagram. A very powerful way to see that in a very simple way. And you get that all for free from the E0 tables. Now, let's look at these vertical lines here where these uh, equilibria occur between zinc 2 plus, ZnOH2 and so on. Uh, we can get those from equilibrium constants. So here is, for example, the first one, zinc 2 plus, ZnOH2. Uh, we can write the equilibrium constant for this reaction. We can look it up if we like at a particular, or measure it at a particular concentration. And once we have uh, that equilibrium constant, we can work out the pH at which this is at equilibrium for a given set of concentrations. Again, the values that we choose for that. So here we have a pH where equilibrium occurs, and likewise for this reaction and the following reaction. So that's it. We have now constructed a very simple Pourbaix diagram for zinc. We can use it um, to examine corrosion behavior. So here we have noted that oxides of sometimes uh, have the ability to pr protect a metal from corrosion. Aluminium oxide is a particular case. Zinc oxide is another case. So in green we have uh, a region where we know experimentally or by other means that that particular material uh, does not undergo, it forms an oxide layer which prevents corrosion on the surface of the zinc. Uh, these other species do not. Uh, so what that means is when we put the zinc into the water, the zinc dissolves under these conditions, pH less than 8.9, to form zinc 2+. That's corrosion. At pH between 11.1 and 13.2, again, the zinc metal dissolves in this region to form HZnO2 2 minus, corrosion, and likewise corrosion over here. So this is the non-corrosion part, and these are corroding regions. The blue region is the part where uh, the metal exists uh, without dissolving, uh, and this is the region of immunity. Unfortunately, for zinc, or fortunately, whatever your application may be, the zinc lies outside the region of stability of water, so its immune region, its immunity from corrosion, uh, cannot be achieved in water. I hope you understood that. See you later.